Hello everyone, Tuesday here, and not too long ago I showed you how to turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76 but better, and after that I showed you how to turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76 even more. But since Bethesda is still adding new stuff, and I still keep finding new mods, we will continue our journey to turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76, because well, we aren't done just yet. And the way I'm going to be doing this is by going all the way back to the day the beta started and make a journey to what the game is now. We will cover it all and leave no stone unturned because I promised to make this the most complete list of mods that turns Fallout 4 into Fallout 76 and I stick by my promise. So let's roll the intro and continue to turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76. Shall we? November 14th, 2018. The game releases. We all get greeted by a 50 GB update, but after that it's time to start up the game. And we start in a vault. We wake up, we get called out for being drunk the night before, at least someone was having fun, and then it's time to get our Pip-Boy. And boy, does it look cool. Introducing the very first mod of today, the Pip-Boy 2000 Mark VI, made by Neher. And holy crap, look at this. This Pip-Boy looks like it's been ported straight over. But here's the thing, it is not. This is all custom made from the ground up and it looks amazing. Neher, you have truly done a fantastic job on this one. After acquiring our 1950 smartwatch, it is finally time to leave this vault. And on the outside we find ourselves a weapon and we get our very first taste of combat. Which is also when we realize that ammunition in this game goes pretty fast. And also that you won't find as much ammo as you would in Fallout 4. Well, not in the beginning at least. Introducing less loot and ammo, available only for PC. Like the title says, this mod makes loot and ammo harder to find. This mod is fully customizable, so you can change the settings to whatever you like best. For example, you can choose if you want to find less ammo, if you want to find less mats and camps, and even if you want to find less legendary items, making the game remarkably harder, but not impossible. After getting rid of the enemies, we're tasked to go to my favorite little town in Appalachia, Flatwoods. And in Flatwoods, we can find a robot vendor that sells quite a few nice things. Weapons, clothes, plants, and even ammo, which after that little run-in wouldn't be so bad to have. I need some fucking ammo! However, this ammo is so expensive, we probably have to sell one of our own kidneys to be able to afford it. Introducing, once again, less loot and ammo, because this mod also has a setting that increases the prices if you want to buy something and lowers them if you want to sell something. And this setting itself also has a bunch of its own options. For example, you can choose if you want the prices to be just slightly higher than normal, or you can choose that from now on you will have to sell both of your kidneys with every purchase you make. So, the less loot and ammo mod really adds a lot of nice things to make the game just a bit harder. And way more expensive, potentially. Back in Fallout 76, let's see what else there is to do in town. Well, of course there are the responder quests, which means it's time to go talk to the volunteer bot. A pre-war protectron that is now working as a vendor for the responders. And, you know, I really like how these protectrons look. And this is not even the only version. There are a bunch of different responder protectrons walking around the wastes of Appalachia. There are responder vendors like this one, but also in different colors. Then there's a responder medic. And there's even a responder protectron with a police skin. Introducing Tuesday's Fallout 76 responder protectron paint jobs. A mod I made actually, available for both PC and Xbox. This mod will add 5 different responder protectron paint jobs to Fallout 4. Using the robot workbench, you can create a Protectron and give it a nice responder paint job. You can turn it into a green vendor, a blue vendor, a tan vendor, a medic and even a police officer. So if you like the responders just as much as I do, then this is the mod for you. Like I said previously, this volunteer bot is also a vendor. And we can choose if we either want to interact with it or if we want to make a trade. But then we notice that if we want to trade, we immediately go to the trading menu. No dialogue, no anything. Introducing Quick Trade, a mod made by Registrator2000, available for both PC and Xbox. This mod will do the same thing plus a bit more. Now when you walk up to the vendor, you will get a trade option, which will lead you straight to the trading menu. 
However, if you're looking for a more realistic approach, then maybe the Quick Trade Redux mod is the one for you. Made by Dalbill and sadly only available for a PC. This mod takes the previous Quick Trade mod and adds a bunch of new options. For example, there's now an option which disables the use of Quick Trade or Quick Inventory while in combat. There's also an option that disables Quick Trade or Quick Inventory while the person you want to be trading with is sleeping. And these kind of options just make the mod a bit more realistic in my eyes. But the responders have more to offer than just some Protectrons. They also have a bunch of really cool looking outfits. Like this one for example. The Responder Paramedic Jumpsuit. Introducing Tuesday's Fallout 76 Responder's Paramedic Jumpsuit. Also available for both PC and Xbox. Like the title says, this mod will add the paramedic jumpsuit to your game. It looks almost exactly the same and even though I made it, I think it's fair to say that it looks pretty damn nice. However, wearing outfits works a bit different in Fallout 76. If you have leather or metal armor for example, they will now become invisible, making it look like the player is just wearing an outfit like every other person. Introducing Concealed Armors, available only for PC. This mod will add a modification to your armor pieces where you can choose if you want them to be visible or not. This way you can have some really nice looking mixes of both visible and invisible armor pieces. The mod works great and I really like the choice they've given us here, so yes, all in all, a very good mod. Back in Fallout 76, it is time to say goodbye to Flatwoods because we are headed elsewhere. And along our journey, we might find one of these, a pre-war set of binoculars. Which, by the way, you could also just find right outside a tent in Flatwoods. But anyways, with these binoculars, you can now look for potential enemies from afar. Introducing Pre-War Binoculars, available for PC and Xbox. A mod that adds usable binoculars to the game. And honestly, they should have been in Fallout 4 to begin with. I mean, you can see McCready carrying one with him for the entire game, so why not just add one? Anyways, besides adding usable binoculars to the game, it also comes with a bunch of modifications. Such as 4 different magnification options, a lighter build body which is more stable and even a recon module. And I especially like this mod since I got pretty much the very same vintage looking binoculars at home in real life. So yes, be sure to spot those people in the distance because they might not be so friendly after all. Besides finding binoculars, we can also find higher tier weapons such as the Black Powder Pistol. But that requires a very specific type of ammo, which is pretty rare. You could of course buy it, but you are running out of kidneys to sell. So what do you do then? So sad. Well, lucky for us, you can also craft it. Using the scrap that litters the Appalachian Wasteland. All we have to do is find ourselves some scraps and a Tinkerer's Workbench and we are ready to go. Introducing Fallout 76 style ammo crafting, made by Featherther. Sadly it's only available for PC, but maybe in the near future I'll just create my own version and make it available for consoles as well. Comment down below if you want this to happen. But let's talk about this mod first. Fallout 76 style ammo crafting has the ability to craft ammo at the chemistry workbench. It has the exact same crafting recipes as in Fallout 76, just a different workbench. There are mods out there that add fully fledged ammo crafting workbenches, but they never seem to work really well for me for some reason, and they also don't have the same recipes as they do in Fallout 76, so I'm giving this mod some extra bonus points for that. But let's take a big leap in time to March 13th, 2019. Fallout 76 received an update and the Wild Appalachia DLC got released, and soon after on May the 7th the questline Forever Upwards was released basically turning us into a giant army of boy scouts. But it also introduced some new weapons, and one of these new weapons was a crossbow. Wow. Introducing Crossbows of the Commonwealth, made by Trickyvine, available for PC, Xbox and PS4. This mod adds a crossbow to the game which has a bunch of different modifications and besides changing the weapon itself, you can also change the type of arrow that you are using. All in all, a very nice mod if you're going for a more stealthy approach. September 10th, 2019. Fallout 76 received another update, which adds a fridge. For the price of 700 atoms of course, because adding something that's actually free? Come on now. But it did remind me that Fallout 4 doesn't even have a fridge that you can place down. 
It only has these small puny coolers, which are nice for storing beer, but kinda unrealistic if you need to store the meat of an entire generation worth of animals. Introducing Working Fridges, available for PC and Xbox. This does not only add a couple of fridges that you can place down, oh no, this mod also makes them work. So if you put in a disgusting room temperature beer and leave it in for a while, it will become a beautiful and delicious ice cold beer. But maybe that's just not enough. Introducing the fridge, available only for PC. A mod that adds exactly the same as the previous mod does, but this time you can see that it has some clutter. And for it to work, you will also need to connect it to a power source. So it's up to you which one you would rather use. Moments later, while I was still browsing the item shop, I noticed something else. A lumberjack outfit. Now is there a mod of that? No. But look what he's holding. A chainsaw. Now I swear guys, I did not know that Fallout 76 had actual chainsaws. I always thought they were just talking about the Ripper, but they weren't. There are actual chainsaws. And since Fallout 76 has chainsaws, I want Fallout 4 to have a damn chainsaw. So I introduce to you the Murdering Chainsaw mod, made by the same person that created the crossbow mod, Tricky Vine, available for PC, Xbox and PS4. And my first reaction to this thing was, oh my god, it's unnecessary gory and I love it. It's way more epic than those small puny rippers that you find on gunners. A ripper is just a small pointy toothpick compared to this bad boy. It plays great, it sounds great and it's just epic. But then something happens. Something that is absolutely despicable. October 23rd 2019. Fallout 76 received yet another update, and with this update, Fallout 1st is introduced. The backlash is immense, but we aren't here to talk about how awful and disgraceful this is. I'm here to show you how you can turn Fallout 4 into Fallout 76, and how you can get some of the new items that were included with this premium subscription based bullshit. Because you see, one of the items that was added with this is an outfit, called the Ranger Armor Outfit, based on the Veteran Ranger Outfit that comes with Fallout New Vegas. I don't know why it's in there, but it's in there. So I introduce to you the last mod on today's list, a mod that does not cost you $100 a year to have, a mod which has been downloaded over 1 million times and has been viewed over 3 million times the NCR Veteran Ranger Armor Mod, made by Unoctium, available for both PC and Xbox. This mod will add the NCR Veteran Ranger outfit to your game, but not only that, you will also get the Anti-Material Rifle and the Ranger Sequoia Revolver. So that's 3 for 1, which I mean, if you have the outfit, you should have the proper weapons as well. I mean, you know, right? So yeah. But with the Wastelander update slowly creeping in, I guess we'll see if this update will be Fallout 76's long awaited redemption, or if it's gonna be Fallout 76's latest disappointment. Until then I want to thank you for watching, if you enjoyed make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and did I miss any molds, be sure to comment them down below to let me know. And a special thank you to my awesome patron Whipped Donald. And if you also want to be as awesome as Whipped Donald is, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. There are a bunch of different tiers, which each have their own benefits. So be sure to check it out, because I'm sure there's a perfect tier for you. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Tuesday, and I will see you next time.